Oh, so good. All right, we've got our caffeine. Let's talk a little code. Today we're talking about password crackers. And if you've done any kind of penetration testing, if you've spent any time on a red team, you've come up on a hash that needs to be cracked. And the question is, how long do you have to crack it? And what kind of hash is it? And based on the answers to those questions, that's gonna determine what kind of password cracker you should use. Really, we only have two options in 2021, and that is to build your own or to leverage a cloud service provider for one. Building your own is by far the most economical way to go. You can get all of the equipment one time upfront cost, and then you just have the power consumption and the maintenance of the device going forward. Um, but if you do the cost and the ROI, it does end up being cheaper in the long term. The problem with on-prem password crackers is one, you have to have a place to put it, and two, you have to source all of the components. Right now, that's fairly difficult because supply chains are interrupted. Uh, there's a big influx of at-home gamers, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency miners. So getting your hands on GPUs is really difficult right now. Um, so the other thing is cloud service providers make great uh, make access to these crackers very easy. So we can SSH into them from anywhere in the world. Um, you know, their uptime is phenomenal and the only downside is they're really expensive. So if you use one, if you're testing, if you're gonna follow along with us, just recognize that uh, these are not cheap and if you forget about it, like I did, uh, for a weekend, you'll you'll wake up on Monday morning and realize you've run up a pretty hefty bill. The other thing to keep in mind is you know, we are cracking passwords. Um, you wanna make sure that you're always following the law, apply common sense, and don't do anything immoral or illegal. That's our disclaimer here at 7X. That said, uh, let's jump into a little bit of fun. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing that we need to do is request a limit increase for our Amazon account. And the problem is that by default, Amazon does not give you the ability to launch P3 instances without putting in the request first. So as you can see here, the P3 instances are the NVIDIA V100 Tensor Core GPU backed instances. This is gonna be what's gonna allow us to offload a lot of the cracking performance to the GPUs. So in order to get an instance like this, we're gonna to need to request a service increase. And we do that by coming into my service quotas, going to EC2, P spot instances. Come in here, request quota increase, and change the quota value to the amount that you would like. For us, we started with 32. Put your request in, and once it's in, when you'll be notified when the instances are approved. So once you've been approved, you can come into EC2 and choose to launch a new instance. From here, you're gonna to have to select your AMI, and I believe that the current 1804 LTS will work. However, if you want to be exact, this is the instance that we have used, and it's in the community AMI section. So you would come in here and select this instance AMI, and for instance type, you're gonna come all the way down to P3 and you're gonna do a P38XL. This is gonna give you the best blend of performance as well as cost efficiency. Uh, be forewarned, this is a very expensive instance and you will incur a large amount of cost if you forget to turn this off when you are done. Since we already have one built, I'm just gonna go with a generic T2 small for now, just to walk through the rest of the process. When provisioning the instance with storage, you're gonna to wanna to give this a fairly large hard drive, probably 250 gigs or bigger, and that's mostly because your crack dictionaries are going to be huge and potentially any hash 
output that you have could be fairly large as well. So make sure you have enough space on your instance to hold all of that. Okay, so you can see that our instance is now launching and once it's up, we'll be able to connect to it. Okay, so once our instance has been launched, we can come back to the EC2 dashboard, grab the public IP address for this device and connect to it. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is update all of the packages. Make sure we're running the latest and greatest. And once the system's been updated, we're gonna need to install a few packages. Okay, after those packages are installed, the next thing we need to do is modify the Blacklist Nouveau Conf located in Mod Probe inside of Etsy. And of course that didn't work because I didn't use sudo and this is a privileged file. So repeating our command, sudo make me a sandwich. We will paste all of our handy dandy text. After we've done that, we need to do a few extra things. Okay, then we need to update init ram fs. And finally we need to reboot. Okay, once the server comes back up, we'll log back in. And the next thing we need to do is install the NVIDIA drivers. So we will grab those. Once that is downloaded, you are going to want to run the NVIDIA install with this command here. Now, since this is not a GPU backed instance, I don't know what this command will do, so we're not going to run it. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install the CUDA developer drivers after you get them. Keep in mind the NVIDIA CUDA drivers are fairly large. And again, this goes back to us making the point about needing a fairly large hard drive when we start this. Okay. You'll install by running this command here. and You will accept all of the default options. Next thing we're going to need is 7-zip to be able to extract Hashcat once it's downloaded. And then we're going to go ahead and grab and download Hashcat. I like to put Hashcat and all of my password cracking tools into opt. And once we are in opt, we can extract this. Pseudo for the win. Okay. 
We're gonna flip into root just because most of the actions we're gonna need from this point forward are going to require it. So we can verify that our instance of hashcat is now working. Okay, so if this worked, we should be able to move into hashcat and run it in benchmark mode. And you'll see these NVML device get fan speed functions that aren't supported. That's also normal and to be expected as these are virtualized instances that may or may not have support for some of the hardware monitoring that has been virtualized by AWS. So here you see Hashcat going to work utilizing all four NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPU cards. And the next step from here would be to get yourself some dictionary lists, some masks, and some rules, as well as the hash files that you plan to crack. Let me know in the comment section below if you think a video on how to crack hashes would be helpful, including where we get our word lists from, as well as our rules, masks, and cracking strategies to optimize cracking. Okay, I ran out of caffeine before I ran out of code, so that's gonna do it for me. Uh, hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more great content. Have fun building your password cracker, keep an eye on your costs, don't do anything illegal or immoral, and we'll see you in the next one. I need more caffeine.